Well, we're out in the shop this morning because check it out. One part showed up. We got the carburetor kit. So we're going to rip the air cleaner off this old thing and uh, get the carb off and start tearing into it and rebuild it. All right, we got it off and it's sitting on the bench here. We'll just start tearing into it and see what it looks like. I tried separating the throttle linkage at the little pivot ball, but it didn't really want to pop off of there, so I didn't want to risk, you know, breaking or bending the linkage, so I just took it off at the other end. Now we can take this screw out and just pull the linkage off altogether and get it out of the way. Won't be an issue. Now this is the Carter produced single barrel carburetor for Chrysler, obviously, and it's the ball and ball model, as you can read on the side. And uh, I've actually got another one sitting right there, so that's kind of funny. But uh, these were pretty common on most all the uh, the old Mopar stuff, especially the Flathead 6 motors. And uh, you, you see them pretty frequently on that era of Mopar. Now the M37 carburetor was a lot like this. The top was built a little differently because they had the, the angled piece that you could put a snorkel on but uh, overall they're kind of the same carburetor and I I've been into one of those so uh, you know this should be pretty easy single barrels usually are until you get into like the 1980s where they got all kinds of vacuum controlled emissions junk on them so this one should be pretty easy and fun so let's get tearing into it there so when this thing was on the truck and we were trying to get it running, I was giving it gas with the electric fuel pump and uh, it was filling the bowl as it should, but it was spitting gas out the seal here where the gasket is, where the top and the rest of the carburetor bolt together. Now, you know, usually that indicates it's a bad gasket, it's rotted, you know, and partially missing, which is kind of what this one looks like if you look in here. There's kind of a gap, and I don't really see the gasket like I can right here. So, um, I'm suspecting it's a bad gasket, but also in that kind of situation, uh, you could suspect a, a bad float. You know, the float's not shutting off and metering the, uh, the fuel once it's, you know, full, because when it fills the bowl, the float should come up and put the needle into the seat and shut the fuel flow off, you know, until it's running, and then... The float settles back down, you get more fuel in, it does that, so on and so forth. So uh, when it's usually doing that, it's either a gasket or a float issue. So, I mean, if the if the floats, you know, got issues, we got parts, carburetors, I got that one there. And another one in the back, in the van, so we should be all set as far as, you know, if we need parts. Something else I noticed right away, this fitting for the fuel line has a nice big split in it. So, you know, we're gonna rob one out of a different carburetor, of course. But anyways, enough uh, blabbering. We can start by taking the top off of it. We got this accelerator pump kind of hanging up in there. There we go. Not too bad. I mean, I've seen worse. And as you can see, the gasket is pretty, uh, you know, crusty and not really sealing all that great. So I would say that was our leaking issue, but we will check out the float as we go here. Now we will, you know, try and not to rip that while taking it off. So when we rip open the kit, we can match it up. We got a brass float. So we'll just keep going here. There's the accelerator pump. Pull the float out now. There 
There's the float. Now hold it up to your ear and shake it. If you hear anything shaking around in there, it's most likely got a little pinhole in it. But uh, even if you don't hear anything, it could still have an issue. Now I don't hear anything, but you know, we will uh, put it in a little can with some water and see if it floats or, you know, sinks. But really not that bad in here. It's definitely one of the cleanest carburetors I've ripped apart that, you know, hasn't been uh, touched in a long time. Seems like everything is still free and working. Oh yes, these things have the little funny shaped needle. I can't remember, the the uh, kit might even give us a new one of these. I'd have to look, but we'll just keep going here. We'll unhook this accelerator pump, this little clip here. And that was on the third hole. And just uh, turn it till it lines up to come out. You see it's only goes one way. Accelerator pump is pretty, uh, you know, crusty and brittle. So that's why they give you a new one. Yeah, really not too bad. Pull our spring out. No check ball in there. Now this was an issue in the M37 carburetor because the threads in it wanted to absolutely annihilate themselves so hopefully it doesn't happen here And then it's got a little seal on it. Just little things like that to pay attention to. There's our check ball down in there. And it's got a keeper in it. I forgot they were like that. So we'll try and get that thing out of there. Make sure you don't shoot that clip halfway across the room, like I just did. There. There's the little ball. Out of there. We will just keep going. And another ball, a larger one, so you don't get them mixed up. And we're pretty well there. Just need to grab a socket and get that out. 
check it out. I found it. Onwards. Overall, really pretty clean. I'm surprised. We'll pull our uh, screws out here and separate it from the base, but also pull the mixture screw out. And there we have that, all gutted, except for the fitting. And that's ready to be cleaned. And then same with our base here, it's ready to be cleaned. And we have our gaskets in mostly one piece to be able to match up where they go and uh, match up the new ones. So we are ready to start cleaning. Well, now we can take all of our little parts and put them in here, start soaking them. So while our carburetor parts are soaking, let's get underneath the truck here because when I was doing the transmission, I noticed the fuel tank has a drain on it. So let's get a pan and a wrench and we'll see what all is in this fuel tank. And you know, if it's not too dirty or anything stupid like that, we can, uh, you know, hook the fuel line back up to this tank and use it rather than our usual boat tank or gas can with a hose stuck in it routine. And that would be kind of cool to use the tank. So let's see what's in it. All right. Well, it's loosening. We'll just work it back and forth a little bit. Oh, nice. There's nothing in there. Oh, it's nice and... Oh, man. Yeah, I don't think we're using this without cleaning it. It's nice and crusty and all sorts of dried up mess in there. Well, we tried. Looks like we'd have to pull this thing out and then, you know, put a bunch of nuts and bolts in it and shake it all around and flush it out real good because it is definitely not worth dumping gas into and just trying well there we go got everything pretty clean doesn't look too bad we'll go ahead and start throwing it back together but first we'll grab the float and i've got some water here and we'll just kind of test it and see if she's still good Submerge it here for a little bit just to make sure there's no pinholes or anything stupid in it that's gonna, you know, let fuel in and cause issues. Now we'll 
will dry it off. And if we hear any kind of water in it, that's a bad sign. Seems like it's good. So we'll uh, run with it and we'll start going together. All right, we'll start by putting the base back together. So we'll grab our old gaskets for that, lay them out, and then go through the kit here because they give you several different styles just in case it's a certain model ball and ball carter. So looks like that's it. And that's it. So we'll get these out of the way. Don't need those now. And we'll just lay things out how they go. Grab this. And put it on like so. There, that's back together. So we'll keep going and putting parts back into it. Check our kit for new uh, check balls here. There they are. One larger one, one smaller one. our larger one in there. Oh, missed it. There, got it that time. And get this in. And our smaller one here that was down in there. So we'll just kind of drop her in there and then get this clip back in that we shot across the shop earlier. There, that's in there now. So we'll grab this little jet and replace the seal on it and get it back in. Fine, we'll see how you like this. Yeah, that's what I thought. And onto the floor. We'll just run some compressed air through that just in case. And back in there you go. There's that. And what do we have next here? Oh yes, this little thing. Another one to cut off. We'll just make sure the new one's the same size. Looks like it. There.
that's in there. Now we can do our accelerator pump, get that crappy old thing replaced. I give you this new one here. So we just change it out like so. You see it's got this thin part right there. So what you do is you compress this spring and then you can turn it and then just take it apart like that. So we'll switch right over to our new one. Press it here and turn. There she is, ready to go. Now I usually just take WD-40 and spray it on the accelerator pump a little bit, lube it up like so. And then we'll install it. it goes up and down nicely. Now we'll take this little linkage, put it back, and then middle hole on here. And the kit gives you a nice variety of little clips and such, so you can throw a new one on there. There, new clip on. Works as it should. Now, I believe, we can uh, throw the float in, along with the new needle and everything. So, our old one that was split, they give you a new one because the fitting or inlet, whatever you want to call it, also acts as the seat for the needle. So it goes in like so. We will grab our new little gasket for that. Throw it on there. I think that's the right one. We'll check here. I think I saw another one. Yeah. Let's see if that's it. That's a better fit. that and our new needle also I lube the tip of that up with some WD-40 can stick that in there Now our float. That might be upside down. Hold on. Yep. It was upside down because the little tab on it goes up so it can close the needle and then this goes in there which might have to give a little more spring to it like that and our float looks pretty good as is I don't think it needs adjusted. I kind of just make them level 
with the bowl and it looks pretty level in there. So I think it'll be all right. And it does everything it should. So we'll take our mixture screw and get it put in there. So we don't forget that. And be gentle with these. Don't just ram them in there because it likes to uh, mess them up. So I'll go until you feel it get snug like that. And we'll go half, one, half turns out. So one and a half turns should be enough to uh, get her going. Now we'll grab our top gasket, which goes like that and we will match it up with a new one. That's not it. There we go. Looks right to me. And I blew everything out with compressed air and also cleaned the surface up, so that should be fine. And we'll just set her on there, line up the screw holes. Well, there we go. She's all together. I'd say it turned out pretty good. It's nice to see an actual gasket that uh, seals. Looks like it's got a nice tight seal all the way around it, too. So I don't think we will have a gas leak anymore but it's pretty shiny again got new base gaskets for it so we'll throw her back on the truck i cleaned up this old school governor type thing and got the new gaskets in there so we are ready for our carburetor There, she's back on there, bolted down, everything's hooked back up. I replaced the fuel filter. I also replaced this short section of hose and then cut the end of this one off and put it back on this new one. And you know, new clamps and such. So uh, everything looks good, looks nice and shiny. So I'll grab a battery and some priming gas and we'll see how it works. All right, got a gas can under there, batteries in it. I hooked the wire back up to the uh, electric fuel pump. So we'll turn the key on, see if it pumps fuel up. Acts like it is. Well, I mean, we'll just see what it does. Grab some. I think this is still gas. Yep, still gas. Nothing wrong with that. Look, it doesn't spit gas out. So I uh, topped off the radiator, just put some water in there, and it didn't it didn't really take much, maybe a gallon, gallon and a half or so. But uh, it's leaking out the overflow right now because we're still plenty full, as you can see. So. I don't think it's the radiator leaking, it's just coming out the overflow tube that runs over there. So I did that and then I've been running it some more. It's actually sounding pretty decent. Sounds like it's getting better as the more runtime we put on it. I uh, 
Got the throttle linkage a little more freed up inside so it works nice and smoothly now. And with it running, you can kind of hear it popping back here like, uh, you know, maybe we got some gummed up valves and stuff like that still. So, you know, more run time, it should clear out. Uh, gauges are actually working in here. It's charging, it's got good oil pressure. I think it's, I forget what it was reading on the oil pressure. And then it's been sitting right at about like 155 degrees on the temperature. So, you know, overall it's doing pretty good. So I'm gonna run it some more and uh, I might dump some Marvel Mystery Oil down it while running the throttle up a little bit and just kind of run some of that through it. Should help some. And uh, it's still not wanting to crank over from the key. I think it's got a bad wire to the solenoid or something. Somewhere in between it's screwed up. So I will have to sort that out. But uh, one issue with the throttle, that homemade wire guide thing for the linkage was too tight on it. Now it works nice and smooth. So that's much better after I loosen that up. And then it needs a little bit stronger spring there because it doesn't quite want to return all the way. And it kind of high idles itself a little bit. I love how the pump just gradually makes little noises but we'll go ahead and fire it back up here There we go one big thing out of the way i don't think it's too bad it should clear up as we run it more and more that's kind of the case with these old flatheads when they've been sitting for a long time it takes a while to get them to clear out so we're definitely getting there i think uh i think it'll be fine it's nice not having a carburetor that sprays gas everywhere and you know functions again so so that's one big step to making it right and uh doesn't overheat doesn't appear to and seems to do all right that way so we'll just wait till we get our new u-joint in the mail and then we can slam that thing in and throw the drive line back in there and i think we'll be on our way to driving this i'll get a uh, a stronger spring for the throttle down there and i'll run a new wire from the ignition out to the solenoid so we can start it from inside and uh I've got the oil bath air cleaner sitting in the solvent tank right now to clean that up. Then we can put some new fresh oil in that and then slap it back on the carburetor so it doesn't suck in a bunch of dust and dirt and, you know, wreck our nice job there. So we are getting there. 
So hope you guys enjoyed. And until we get more parts, I'll see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.